the defendants and moving out from there to the justice system in general. Well, there you heard the chief of that panel investigating Mike Nifong saying the whole matter was a fiasco. And that's on the docket today in Kelly's court, which is back in session with three lawyers who are in good standing, unlike disbarred Duke prosecutor Mike Nifong. Nifong was, of course, stripped of his license to practice law on Saturday after a legal panel found him guilty of 27 ethics violations, all stemming from his handling of the Duke false rape case. The question now, should Nifong face criminal charges himself for his actions? Let's ask Fox News legal analyst Lise Wheel and defense attorney Mark Iglarsh. Good morning. Okay, so, uh, I mean, it's just been, it was a stunning thing to watch over this weekend as the man's career fell apart as the final exoneration for these boys took place before all of our eyes. Lise, let me start with you. This man we're looking at now, Mike Nifong, wanted those three boys in jail for a minimum of 30 years. If he had gotten his way, they would have never hugged their parents again until they died. Is the loss of his law license enough punishment? You know what, Megan? I don't think so. And you know that all along, until until I learned that Nifong had not turned over the DNA, I said, look, you know, let's have the grand jury do their job. You did. There's That's a true. buffer, all of those things. When I learned that he had not turned over the DNA to the grand jury, to the defense lawyers, I thought, That's it. It's over for him. And I think that he has such abused the system so terribly. Terribly, though, yes, we have to send a message and go for after criminal charges for him. Obstruction of justice, if nothing else. Yeah, Mark, how about it? I mean, the, the, the bar has done its part saying you no longer get to be a lawyer because lawyers aren't allowed to do that kind of thing. But what about holding him accountable to the community, to the, to the boys, for what he put them through? If anything good has come out of this, I finally agree with Lise on one of your topics. <laughs> um, yeah, forgive me for not celebrating his disbarment. To me, that's just a step in the right direction. He needs to feel a similar pain that these three boys suffered. And the only way that's going to happen is if he himself is stripped of his liberty and he faces jail time. Lise, do you think it will actually happen? He goes before the judge who handled the underlying yeah. case this week, who has made clear he is none too happy with Mike right. Nifung. It was this judge that was lied to by Mike Nifon right. when he said, hey, DNA, I turned it all over. Well, now we know from this independent panel that was a lie. What do you think this judge will do? Will he hold him in criminal contempt and Megan, send him Megan, I think so. I really do. It was such egregious violations here. This isn't just a little slip up of anything. You know, it was a pattern of behavior. And I think this judge and other judges like him are going to say, look, we have to make an example. Prosecutors, as a prosecutor, former prosecutor I know, have so much power. We can ruin people's lives yeah. with an indictment and that's exactly what he did here so I really do think he does, needs to be hold, held accountable and, and you know Mark I'm glad that you're coming to the right side here. <laughs> Mark do you think <laughs> that Judge Smith who's gonna handle this case do you think that he will be persuaded at all since Nifong's given up the job well he had to basically as DA uh, that he has lost his law license that he cried on the stand he was publicly humiliated will that lead him to not pursue those criminal sanctions against him Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. No, that's not enough. Too little, too late. He had numerous opportunities to come forward and make the families feel at least a step in the right direction to be made whole. This case needs to be studied around the country by every graduating law school student. And after they study this case, their professors need to say, folks, do the opposite. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. He is an example of what you should not be as a lawyer. But Lise, let me ask you, because there's another question. There's many had pushed for a federal civil rights prosecution of Mike right. Nifung for the Department of Justice to get involved in this case. They said, we'll wait until the bar makes its decision. What do you think will happen there? I, I think that if the bar, the bar has made its decision, and and then the judge makes a decision locally as a state matter to go ahead because this actually would have been a state prosecution to begin with to and get him with obstruction of justice. I don't see the feds then getting in. Mark, I think that's sort of piling on. Mark, I'll give you the quick final word. I'll take a federal prosecution as well because prosecutors around the country need to know that this type of behavior cannot go on. And by the way, Judge Kelly, this isn't the only Mike Nifung out there. There are many throughout the country that I deal with on a daily basis. Uh, sadly, there are some, some bad apples, but of course, many excellent prosecutors out there as well. Sure. Lisa and Mark, thank you so much.